When you come across an exciting new method for learning mathematics, you think, this is really cool. Can I use this method in my classroom? But then you realize that you need to think about how the use of this method can contribute to the achievement of the educational goals of the program you are teaching. In fact, it was this issue and the desire to help mathematics teachers make the right decisions when choosing teaching methods that led to the emergence of the wheel of mathematics learning methods. What goals and specific tasks does the teacher set for himself before entering the classroom? How are they related? And how to check whether the set goals are being achieved? Professor Benjamin Bloom of the University of Chicago asked these questions in the 1950s. Trying to bring a set of disparate goals and tasks to a single system. Bloom created a theory that has been the subject of heated debate and discussion for the sixth time. In his fundamental work, Taxonomy of Educational Goals, the Sphere of Cognition, Bloom tried to construct a hierarchy of educational goals covering the cognitive domain, which would describe step by step the levels of human thinking and the learning tasks that follow from this. The team of scientists Anderson et al. revised the taxonomy, changing its content and swapping its levels after the modernization of the taxonomy. A model called Pedagogical Wheel appeared in Carrington's blog, in which they found intersection points of the goals of Bloom's taxonomy and options for using useful iPad applications for the appropriate group. So, one can endlessly argue about the values of Bloom's classification of pedagogical goals. But there is an obvious fact, taxonomy clearly does not lose its relevance. Moreover, it is used not only in the framework of traditional education, but also in completely new models that provide for interactivity of learning and its openness to new technologies. The purpose of our research is to develop a wheel of mathematics learning methods to develop the wheel. We used the analysis of the answers of mathematics teachers and master's students of pedagogical and classical institutions of higher education. 58 respondents took part in the survey. All teachers agreed with the idea that several different areas of didactics should be combined in one diagram, proposed in the form of a wheel. We consider each area as a sieve through which the process of developing mathematics learning methods is filtered. Therefore, the specified areas of didactics work like wheels that turn and move each other. There are five such wheels. Competencies are at the heart of learning design. Mathematical competences meet the long-term goals of educational programs and ensure the student's employability. Motivation is the most important component of any methods. It moves both the student and the teacher, each time providing an answer to the question, why am I doing this again? Bloom's taxonomy is a tool that can help a teacher develop educational goals that ensure the formation of thinking in students, the order of which is constantly growing. Classical methods of teaching and forms of organization of the learning process are accompanied by the use of learning tools that help create the necessary conditions for achieving the goal of learning. The wheel should be seen as a structured set of prompts that provide opportunities to reflect on teaching, from planning to implementation. These prompts are interconnected like mechanical mechanisms that ensure the development of a method for learning mathematics and the selection of its components. During their selection, one should be prepared for the fact that a decision made in one of the areas often affects other decisions. The development of the wheel consisted of several stages. At the first stage, it was decided on the areas of didactics that would be presented in the form of a wheel. The results of the survey of mathematics teachers made it possible to determine the following areas. Competencies, motivation, Bloom's taxonomy, activities, technologies.
At the next stage, it was determined the content of the five sectors of the wheels. The authors filled each sector, apply, analyze, evaluate, create, remember understand, with tips and hints that allow the teacher to implement activities. Active verbs of Bloom's taxonomy and components of the classical methodological system such as methods, forms, means. It was established that Bloom's taxonomy has a direct advantage both at the stage of selecting teaching methods and means or tools, and at the time of determining effective forms of organization of educational activities. This allowed the authors of this study to establish types of teaching methods and means that are most effective for the formation of certain high-level thinking skills with respect to Bloom as well as to rank the forms according to their effectiveness in achieving the goals based on Bloom's taxonomy.